Hello, this is Annette with Project Refine Life. Welcome to my channel and this VR to Kelly. She tagged me in a VR yesterday that she came up with. The tag is 54321 Tarot. So we're sharing five decks, four books, three spreads, two tarot habits and or paraphernalia, and one piece of advice or a card you want to embody. Also, she's asking you to tag five people. So what I chose to do is share with you the last five decks that I've used. So this is the Seasons of the Witch Mabon Oracle. And I'm sure by now <laughs> everybody has uh, seen this deck, but I'll just go through some of the cards with you guys. Um, yeah, this is, one of the latest decks into my collection and so i'm putting this i'm putting this puppy to work already and it may seem like a kind of a weird type of teaming up of decks but it's been working for me so this is the be with your body tarot and you know, I, <laughs> I'm i kind of picky with the Be With Your Body Tarot because it carries a certain energy for me, but I thought, you know what? The overall tones will kind of work and the vibe is good on both, so why not just team them up for this season? And Be With Your Body Tarot has been a deck that I've been using a lot lately, so... Yeah, they're, they're working together. So these are two decks out of the five that I've been using a lot lately. So let's go ahead and share the others. See, I'm going on a full on um, <laughs> type, of, type of walkthrough with you guys. And that is not the intention here. I'm just supposed to share five decks with you guys. So another deck that I just recently used was the Tree Whisper Oracle. This is one of the later or earlier editions, rather, the square one, and I love this deck. Um, it, it doesn't come with a guidebook. This is from Meg's Black, and it's just full of ancient wisdom, full of knowledge. And I paired this one up with, again, another, kind of weird combination for me, but it totally worked. Um, this is the Oak, Ash, and Thorn. So I went ahead and used these two together. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a certain type of wisdom and gentleness within these two that I really just fell in love with. Look at that. You can see an actual face. I know that these are like two halves of the same part of the tree, right? She just kind of inverted the images over, but I just think it is so cool what she did with this deck. Um, just everything that you can see, just gazing in to this deck. So it really requires a little bit of attention and a little bit of a need to go within and kind of slow down and take your time with. And then the Oak, Ash and Thorn just kind of carries that energy as well. So now we're up to four out of the five decks. Again, one of my beloved decks, which is the Northern Animal Tarot. This is the first edition. This deck is one deck that I just, I fell in love with so hard when I got it that I actually, um, I have a backup copy of the first edition. I love this and I love the cardstock on this. It's like this really, thin type of linen but it shuffles really nicely and i love the images and i love the depth of color on this i actually have <laughs> one of the second editions as well and it's a little bit brighter and i have to say that i really do like the depth of the first edition i'm talking to you guys like i'm going through a monthly kind of wrap up with you guys but anywho those are the um five decks that I have used most recently. Um, the four books, this is one of them, Tarot in Motion. I got this pretty recently, and it is a handbook to embody wisdom through the cards. 
I am enjoying this particular book. I do like it. It's a little bit different. It is about movement in relation to your tarot deck and working with it in that manner. I keep getting phone calls and my, <laughs> my watch is just going. Um, so this one, just as an example, this is the Autumn Equinox. And so it gives you like the, the dates. So it goes through like seasons and other things, but just to give you an idea. So here it says, uh, background, Autumn Equinox is the last celebration of the Celtic year. Like the spring equinox, the autumn equinox is a day when there is equal day and night. But instead of gaining more sunlight, we lose it. This is a time to honor the harvest and to find balance. Equinox is from the Latin word ecreris. I can't say that right. <laughs> equal and nox, light. So the intention is to find balance within, turn over a new leaf, and then it gives you questions to ask, and then special materials to bring in it as well. And then it gives you some other possibilities. So I really like that um, it just has a different approach when it comes to drawing cards. So that is the Tarot in Motion. And then this is pretty recent, the Tarot Spreads Yearbook. And again, this is really based upon the season and the spreads are all pretty much the same. So here for the season of shadow, you're gonna have the same type of spreads throughout every season. However, they are more specific to that specific season. So you're gonna have intentions, resources, spirit, mind, career, play, friendship, romance, family, conflict, choice, confidence, and then it goes through like different parts of it, a cycle of shadow. So I really, really see here's, here we are with the um, season of change. And again, intentions, so resources, spirit. So they're not the same spreads, but the same, you get the same title for a different season, which I think is really cool. I really do like this book. And now I know this is not, <laughs> this is not part of the whole tarot books, but I don't want you to ignore the fact that some of these tarot books have some excellent, these tarot decks rather, have some excellent guidebooks. And so like here, the Gentle Tarot, you can buy this particular book, this guidebook all on its own. And I love the way that some books really give you a different perspective as to how to work with tarot and how to use it differently instead of just doing the you know the usual numeric type system or you know this is what it means taking a look at some of the different perspectives within these guidebooks about how to work with that specific deck gives you an opening an area that you can kind of slip into and kind of see that particular card in a different light. And this is one of the books that I really, really love. No surprise, right? The Gentle Tarot is my all time favorite, most wonderful deck. I love the Gentle Tarot. I know she's making a new deck. So I don't know. I don't know if it could ever replace the Gentle Tarot, but I'm sure she's gonna, it's, I'm sure it's gonna be wonderful. But anyhow, getting back to it. So this is one of the books that I'm getting into as far as like, really dig into some of these guidebooks because they have a lot to deliver, a lot of different perspectives that will add to your overall reading. Another guidebook that I really love is the Narrative Alchemy Tarot by Chrissy Bentley. Um, this is both, it can be used both as a tarot and an oracle. I've shared this deck many, many times, but I love, if you've ever listened to Chrissy's voice, the way that she speaks and her thought process, it's in here. So whether you're using this as a tarot or an oracle, it really does have you kind of slow down and really think. And she gives you a different perspective of looking at either that particular word, that particular chakra, that particular tarot card, or working with that particular, um, did I say chakra? Chakra, I don't know if I said it or not, but 
it just gives you a different perspective and just a way to open up. I just love, I love this guidebook. This is another book that I really, really love. The Forager's Daughter Tarot. This book, I love this book. It is so beautiful. It is so wonderfully written. And again, a completely different perspective on the cards and how to work with them. Yes, pretty much coming around to the same determination as your RWS. However, they all have something different. So don't, don't, <laughs> you know don't get distracted by all the tarot spread books and usually they always have tarot spreads in them i'm not going to share any of the tarot spreads from these books because they come with the guidebook and i would hate i would hate to you know share that uh without the creator's explicit permission to me but these books are wonderful so don't get distracted and think that you have to go buy tarot spread books because most of the time you can find them online three spreads that I work with. And I'm gonna be honest, and I'm gonna tell you, I don't work with spreads a majority of the time. There are a few that I work with, and I just shared with you that I do get a lot of spreads from the tarot guidebooks that I'm working with. Also in addition, things like this, the tarot spreads yearbook and tarot in motion. Yeah, sometimes I'll use things like that, especially if I have something very specific that I have in mind, but I would say that more than not, there are a couple of spreads that I really do like. One is the body, mind, and soul. And really, it's just laying down three cards. Tell me what I need to know about the body. Tell me what I need to know about the mind. Tell me what I need to know about the soul. And that's it. I go from there. So you know that usually I work with one oracle and um, a tarot deck, but it's always body, mind, and soul. Another spread that I just came across recently, and it is from the Be With Your Body Tarot, and it's called the Body Check-In Tarot Spread. So it is four questions, and I really like this spread. I've done it a few times since it's pretty recent and I really like the spread and I like the way that her questions continue. It's not just the question itself. When she asks a question, it continues so that you can take that a little bit further. So question number one is your relationship to your body, good or bad, this will tell you where you're at. Number two, what your body needs you to know. Our bodies whisper until they have to scream. By doing this regularly, you will build trust and you will learn how they communicate with you. Number three, environmental influences. We don't exist in a vacuum. What outside influences influence your insides? Number four, your body's relationship to you. Relationships are a two-way street. How do they feel about you? I really love that spread. I think it is a fantastic spread. Easy to work with, easy to really think about. And you know, it kind of cues you into the way that your body shifts and changes on a regular basis, on a daily basis, and sometimes from the morning to the evening, you will have a different perspective <laughs> within your body and what you're feeling and what you're experiencing, depending on when you experience throughout the day or how you slept or anything else. There's a lot of things that can vary within the body. So I love her spreads. She has some really good spreads, but this particular spread, I really, really did like. Okay, and the next spread, the one that I do most often, I work with the Mayan astrology or cosmology on a daily basis. So I'm always looking up the energy of the day and based upon the energy of the day, I will cue in to what that energy is. And then I will just simply ask, you know, I'll get specific about that specific energy and say, what do I need to know about the energy of the day? So that would be my main focus right there. So this would be endurance. And then how do I work 
with that main energy. What do I need to know about that? So then I would lay down two more cards and here we have the seven of wands and the three of swords. This is an example for you, which isn't anything that's written in any spread book or any guidebook. This is just what I do. Two tarot habits and or paraphernalia. All right, so I'm gonna get into my, maybe a little bit of habits, maybe paraphernalia, I guess. Um, I have a whole video on how to clear I think I did one on like my morning ritual where I pretty much go over what I go through every morning and you know what and things change so that's not even exactly what I do anymore you know there's always change but tarot paraphernalia I'm gonna go through my tarot cloths because I keep my cloths that I read with pretty much up here at my desk in this little basket and so I will go through for the most part I really like this cloth here and this is a cloth that i bought from a shop that was here in gilbert arizona at one time she since has moved but um it's really nice because it's like a double layer cloth and as you can see it has a little pin mark back here but i really love this cloth because it doesn't move as you can see this one i always set out because i love the geometry on here um, I love the calmness <laughs> within this. And then sometimes I'll just use things like um, a simple bandana. So like these bandanas come like a two pack at Walmart and you can get them for seriously, I can't even remember how much, I feel like I spent like a buck or two on two bandanas or something. Um, this is a Mesa cloth that I also use. So I have a bunch of different cloths that I use and it just depends like what deck I'm reading with. Um, again, this is another one of the bandanas from Walmart. This tarot cloth, one of my favorites. I love this one. This is another really pretty one. And that came with the tarot deck. And why can't I remember what deck that came with at this time? I don't know. But um, yeah, sometimes when you get decks in, then you get these really beautiful cloths. And so depending on what type of reading I'm doing, what type of energy, this is another bandana. And this one I really love, like the, um, the fabric itself is not as thin as some of the other bandanas. I really love, really, really love this particular one. So don't be distracted. Again, don't be distracted by all the shiny things, even though I, I do get distracted <laughs> myself, but I try to like calm myself down and remember like there's other options that you can use. This again, this, this is um, a napkin, a cloth napkin that I found at Bed Bath & Beyond, I think. I think that's what it was, but I thought, oh, this is perfect for, you know, so there's other options besides spending you know, a lot of money on a tarot cloth. You can always use something like this. And this one, see, look at, I even burned through it with some sage, but I have another one. Um, and then this, things like this too. Like you can pick these up. These are like dish towels that you can get at the Halloween spirit store, the whatever it is. Don't, um, don't limit yourself to thinking that you have to have like a fancy spread, you know, like, it doesn't have to be fancy and you can look for things in in different areas for your tarot cloths. This one I bought from I think Nordstrom in the <laughs> it's a it's a it's a napkin as well. Um, I found it in the dishware area and I really liked it and I thought oh that'll be a nice tarot spread to have available for my readings. All right. The other type of paraphernalia that I use a lot are like oils so i always use something to ground me not always but for the most part either i'm i'm always using sage and um, grounding myself with um, sacred smoke but sometimes i'll just use something like patchouli because patchouli is very grounding and just kind of gets me in that headspace where i need to just focus in a little bit I also have things like frankincense nearby. So depending on what type of reading I'm doing is depending on what type of oil I'm gonna be reaching for. Also, crystals. 
So again, depending on what deck I'm working with, depending on what uh, I need to call in, whether this is a more mental or physical type of reading that I'm doing, depends on what type of energy. So say I need to call in creativity. So I'm gonna be working with Frida here. And then say I'm looking for more psychic type of connection, then maybe I'll be using my amethyst. If I'm using or seeking clarity, then I'm gonna be using my crystal quartz. If I need to cut something or to be aware of something, maybe I'll be using this little guy here. So those are other things that I do call in to my readings. This is my little uh, turtle here and I will use him like sometimes for my moon spreads and stuff like that. So um, it really just depends. But those are some of my different types of paraphernalia that I utilize to get the information that I need <laughs> when I am doing my, um, my readings. Now, the last question is, one piece of tarot advice or a card you wish to embody and why? I'm gonna give you advice. So first piece of advice is, and it says one piece of advice, but it's kind of like, it's kind of more than one piece of advice. Don't let anybody else direct your practice. Don't listen to the people that say they're doing it wrong, she's doing it wrong, they don't know how to read, that's not the way I read, this is not, Listen, everybody has a different method of reading. And I can tell you for sure, from deck to deck, my reading changes the way that I read that particular deck. When I look at things like this deck right here, Oak, Ash, and Thorn, even though I've got another animal deck right next to it, let me bring this out, which is the Northern Animal Tarot, there is no way, there is no way that I am gonna read these two decks the same way. I'm looking at the art, I'm looking at the feeling, I have several decks because I love the differences and the difference in energy between the decks. And I allow that to speak to me, I allow that to guide me. That's part of the reason that I collect because I love the differences within the decks. I love that the energy is just so vastly different depending on the art, depending on the texture. Like seriously, this makes me feel more grounded. This makes me feel more rooted. This makes me feel more gentle, just based on the way that the deck feels. And I know that might sound a little crazy, but that is completely true. Don't be distracted by what other people are saying. Again, that's my whole thing. Like, don't get distracted by other people's ideas about your practice and how you should read. And, and um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that sit here on YouTube and and will say, you know, flat out this person is saying this or this person is doing that and I don't agree with that and I don't think you should do that and don't listen to any of it. Tune into your own practice. Another thing is that when you get started using tarot, this is my original deck right here. So your standard uh, writer weight tarot deck and as you can see <laughs> kind of going through this right I really don't, I understand, this is how I learned. So when I walked in to buy my first tarot deck, my friend told me, no, you're gonna start with this one, Annette. And as you can see, I just kind of have this one in order. Um, I keep it because it's my first deck, but, and I used it for years. This is all that I read with for years. But it really isn't, I think I would have learned faster had there been another deck available to me, maybe I should have bought two tarot decks, like this one as a reference or learning tool, and then, you know, something else. So when I got the Herb Crafters Tarot, and I've shared this many times, the Herb Crafters Tarot, although it looks nothing like this, there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing in connection with these two decks as far as the art and symbolism and all of that go, this deck, taught me so much more about tarot in a shorter amount of time than this one because I was interested. 
this caught my interest. Now this might work for you. And if so, that is outstanding, right? But be aware of your reading style. If something doesn't feel like it's really calling you in, like if it's not pulling you in and really wanting you to get connected with the cards more, like this is another one, the Gentle Tarot. I absolutely love this deck. I completely connect with this deck. These images are wonderful. I <laughs> I get this deck. It gets me. I, I love it. I love this deck. I can completely see how her images connect with the messages of the tarot and then utilizing her guidebook, of course. However, don't let somebody say to you that this deck is how you should read. This is what you should do. You should only be reading with num um, numerology or you should be understanding everything here within this deck before going on to another one. Or if, if you're not reading Marseille or if you're not reading Thoth, that you are not a true reader, I, I am just telling you to just throw all those ideas and that gatekeeping, <laughs> throw it in the trash because that's not the way it is. This is your practice, your own practice. And you need to be comfortable within your own practice. You need to make it yours. Do not allow somebody else to dictate to you what your practice should look like. Now it's time for me to tag five people. So here we go. Vanessa with Deep Desert Tarot. Rochelle at Amethyst Ascension. Sylvia at Fairlight Tarot. Kay at Admiss the Gray. And Don Michelle at Don Michelle Tarot. I would love it if you guys would do this tag. So thank you so much. I appreciate you, Kelly, for tagging me in this video. Have a wonderful day and I will see you later.